So I'll show you how I gouge and prepare the cane uh, for making reeds. First off is I use a, a guillotine from a Ross gouge. It's very reliable. Um, and I use the one that has a triangular shaped blade because I it, it doesn't split the cane as much. I have better luck with it. Uh, so I have a few split pieces here and uh, I try to find a flat flat side to the cane. And I'll try to do this so that it can be seen. And the way I do this is by putting the cane on a flat surface or a relatively flat surface. And you know, um, I recall John Mack saying once that the best pieces of cane don't necessarily stay in the gouging machine. And what he meant by that was that the center of the, the cane was flat in the, be the bed. It seats really well, whereas the ends might flare up. Now, it depends on where you get your cane and the quality of it and just, you know, sometimes it's not so straight. And I try to find a straight piece and then guillotine it chop it. And then I'll check to see if it's split. And that one's, that one's okay. Alright. So, once I do that, I usually like to pre-gouge it, and I use this machine here, which is a Inolady gouging machine, which is also a very fine gouger. But in this case, we'll just use it to pre-gouge. Actually, I'll plane it first, sorry. Let me plane it first. And I don't know if I said this before, but you want this blade to be sharp. It makes your life easier and it'll prevent you from actually hurting yourself or pushing too hard. You just unscrew these screws here and sharpen it on, on a stone, the flat side, until it's nice and sharp. Okay. So now I'll pre-gouge it in here. It just tends to save the blade of the machines. And I will also flip it. Okay. And then you'll have a pre-gouged blank, right? It's probably a little more than a millimeter, a couple millimeters thick, maybe a millimeter and a half. And then I'll soak it. So once I have a soaked piece, Plank. There we go. Then I'll get my gouger. This is these two machines are Ross machines. I really like the tone of the Ross gouge. It's, it has beautiful, rich sound. Um, this is known as a, a graph gouger. I don't use this one as much anymore, but it's also re very reliable. And of course, this one here is the Inolady, which is a marvelous piece of machinery. And when I first saw it working, I could hardly believe my eyes how well it gouged. But I do enjoy this sound of the Ross machine, and I use it mostly. Now, when I gouge in the Ross, it's it's a single radius blade, which means that the blade itself is very close to being circular. You know. Whereas on this machine, the blade is not. You can see that one side is more circular than the other. It's kind of oblong. Um, and so what that means is when you gouge it on this machine, you have to flip it every six, five to eight or ten passes. Uh, you must flip it, okay? <clears throat> but this machine is not like that. You can keep it uh, in the bed without flipping it, and I recommend that because it. Um, I think it's better for the gouge. Uh, I know people that do flip it, and I think that it moves around too much and gives you variables that shouldn't be there. So, and this machine gouges beautifully. can see it's not quite centered. I try to center it as 
much as possible, but sometimes there's an inclination for the blade to pull, pull the um, cane to one side. And this, in this case, I will live with it. Okay. And then, you flip it once. Okay, and that's it. That's all you need to do. Whoa, that split. Not good. Let me try another one. Better now than later. <laughs> this one I won't pre gouge, I'll just gouge it from beginning to end. Okay. I try to remove the chips. And that, that's a beautiful chip. I mean, it's if you were to measure it, it's about half a, half a hundredth of a millimeter in the center. And perfect. See, I'm not flipping it. I just leave it there. And that's best for this machine, believe it or not. And then one final pass. And hopefully it will crack. But it may not have been soaked enough, so... Yeah, this is okay. All right, now I need to soak it a little more, but I have another piece here. And I'll show you how I shape it. Okay, what I need is a shaper right here. Razor blade. Good sharp. Now what I do is I take the cane after it's soaked. And this is enough. I don't actually score the cane. Uh, I like to tell how strong it is as I'm folding it. And hopefully it won't split. Okay. And then I'll put some notches in the ends. I'm sure most of you know how to do this, but so it fits, fits between the ears of the shape. You notice I have a few shapes here. I inherited some of these from our former second oboist, a wonderful man, Colin Smith. Um, and um, our English horn player, Susie Myers, in the BPO, actually brought those to me, and it was a really nice gesture. It's just some classic shapes in there, a lot of Pisoni shapes. There's also a Brandon X in here. Um, it's a Nagamatsu here. I got a Robinson bar and a Mac Pfeiffer Mac. So I got a few, you know, and then two two of my own. Got a few um, classics. But you know, I never didn't have much luck with the Brandon X for some reason. Now I lay it down on the desk. I've seen other people do it differently, but. And I do turn the blade to one side. Uh, it's a habit. It's a bad habit, I suppose, but it depends on the shape you're using. A narrower shape, you might not want to do the, that. Like a... Okay. So there you have it. Now, definitely remove the ears before you go any further. Okay? Remove these ears. Because they will not help you. And also, I'll just take a tiny notch out. I know some players don't do this, but I, I find it helps when wrapping. It's a tiny notch. Okay. So there you have your gouge shaped folded piece of cane.